That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Good Nurse, the fourth film directed by Tobias Lindholm. Uh, it's also his English debut, uh, which premiered at the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival and was released courtesy of Netflix in a brief theatrical window, October 19th, uh, before it was available to stream October 26th, 2022. Do we know Tobias's other films? Yes, uh, he's quite a good director and screenwriter. Uh, I think Pilu Aspect stars in his first couple of films are and oh, a hijacking and a war. I'll recommend it. He's also written several features for Thomas Vincherberg, such as The Hunt and Another Round, both starring Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, so you've likely seen his work somewhere. I thought overall this movie was good, and the performances from the leads are very good. Yes. But I think the story is a really weird angle to take um, since it's based on it's a ba- true story. It's based on a true story. It's also uh, adapted from a book written by Charles Graber. Uh, so I, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, angle of that book was. But but the basic story, it, the story revolves around uh, a nurse named uh, Amy. No. Mm-hmm. Amy, Amy Loughran. Loughran, played by Jessica Chastain. She's a single mom with two kids. She works graveyard shift as a nurse at a local hospital. In Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. She seems to be struggling financially. She's also having pretty severe health issues. Mm-hmm. She suffers from cardiomyopathy. Her doctor's telling her if she doesn't slow down, she could die in a matter of months. Um, she needs a heart transplant. She needs to take off time from work, but she cannot because... She hasn't been at her job long enough to take medical leave, and she hasn't been there long enough to even have medical insurance. So everything's looking bad. One day, her boss says, hey, I got you help on the overnight shift, and in comes Eddie Redmayne, playing a character named Charles... A character. A a person (laughs) named Charles Cullen, Cullen, who's a real person. Long story short, Charles Cullen was killing patients. Mm -hmm. We never find out why, but he's convicted of killing 29 people... And is suspected of killing up to 400 people, which would make him like the most prolific serial killer of all time. And with the help of Amy working with detectives, she's able to produce a confession from Charles, which is what gets his ass locked up. The end. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this was adapted into a screenplay screenplay by Christy Wilson Cairns, uh, known for Penny Dreadful, um, 1917 and uh, Last Night in Soho which was a film I did not like uh, directed by Edgar Wright uh, so yes I, I agree with the approach of this is curious because so I thought the performances from the two were very good and after I was done with the movie I read all about Charles Cullen and he is a he is quite the subject clearly severely mentally ill and went through the system like at every turn people saw that he had issues and he worked at many many hospitals where he was let go from because there were suspicions that he was killing patients but the crux of the issue is that these hospitals don't want to be liable so they find a way to sort of sweep it under the rug and get him out of there so like they do what the catholic church does with priests yeah basically (laughs) So I thought this movie should be something like the, the movie Spotlight or that movie Mark Ruffalo about, with Mark Ruffalo about Teflon. Dark Water. Dark the Water. Mm-hmm. It should have been something like that. I, I, I think because... Well, approaching it, seeing a little more different angles because I think, I think you know, Chastain is so good. I left this film, I, like in the ether of the film, I was like, oh wait, I really felt like I know nothing about the serial killer. Kind of like the... Uh, the documentary about the night stalker recently where it's like we become uncomfortable with dealing with the uncomfortable topics sometimes so it's just he felt very brushed under the rug yeah i was saying earlier to you that i thought this could have been two different movies like a story about the woman jessica chastain played and maybe we're not even introduced to charles cullen until the end of that film because really this woman's struggle I, is is very compelling. Is compelling on its own, and she's so good. And how cruel is it that right. you know she's working? She's working as a health care provider, mm-hmm. and she can't get any health care herself. I, I feel like that she could have her own movie. Yeah, but then really, we need kind of like a thriller procedural about Charles Cullen and how he was able to manipulate 
uh, and like thrive in these environments because of greed, right? It's yeah. all about money. Mm -hmm. And these people don't care that he's killing folks. They just don't want to be liable. So what we end up with is something that is feels very curious, but... Yes, and I, I did enjoy Kim Dickens as the uh, hospital administrator. Oh, yeah. Who uh, is very just dismissive of the detectives and just kind of like, I'll, you well, know. Well, because she knows. She knows, but it, it's kind of funny. And I do like the scene where they dismiss uh, Colin because, you know, that that's, you know, predicated on everybody really knows what's going on. Yeah. Here. My very first note is healthcare sucks. Yeah, We yeah. might as well all just die. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean, that was so frustrating to watch her be such a good nurse and that can't even get healthcare. Yes, and can't even get... To see a doctor outside of the place she works completely because they can't know she'll get fired. And then she'll get, yeah, I mean, that was hard it's to watch. It's so clandestine because it, she has to have this scene with the detectives as well to tell them about her, like she has to uh, prep them. That's why I think this could have been such a good movie just about her because even the moment where she has to pay for her like, like doctor visit where he tells her you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You told me I'm going to die and I have to, I have to pay you $980. <laughs> and I have to split it on two credit <laughs> and cards. And I put it on two different cards. I, I got teary. I just thinking like, because you know, when she's working in the ICU and then you have these patients with their families and they demand so much and they're so critical of the nursing staff and the medical staff, like do everything you can for my family. And it's like, this lady is literally dying as you're trying to get her to do more for your dying family member it just all felt so, so icky. And well, I felt actually more anxiety for her potentially being discovered. <laughs> her condition. Being I was discovered. more worried about her, Amy getting sick. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was the only tension I felt is, oh my gosh, she's going to get sick. Or there I, was zero tension regarding Charles Cole. That really, except for, you know, you, you do start to wonder, would, is, is he playing a game with her? Is he going to pull the rug out from her and try to do, you know, because when she gets, uh, she passes out and she had, wakes up in a hospital bed and she's very, you know, she already kind of knows his game and she's very distressed. Yeah, I'll get to that note. Um, but I did get, so we kind of get a glimpse early on of maybe why Charles Cullen was in healthcare because he talks about how his mother died in the hospital mm -hmm. and the hospital didn't even call to tell them until days later. And then when he arrived, she was just like, they couldn't find her body for hours. And when they did find her, she was just there naked, half covered, looking crazy. So he talks about wanting to do this job to provide dignity to the, like the dead and making sure they're presentable. And so I, I, that was very interesting because then of course I'm thinking, cause I didn't know anything about Charles Cullen before I was thinking, Oh, he was killing patients to sort of help them relieve like the pain and misery of a slow death. Like and, Dr. Kevorkian? Yes. But then clearly, that's not what was happening. But not based on this movie, based on what I read about him after I watched the movie. Sure. He was not... He, he was just randomly choosing people sometimes. And he was... Well, we can get like into Like the it. Night Stalker, really. Uh, yes, I think that... It, I knew nothing about Charlie Cullen going into this film. But even, you know, the the obligatory end credit sequences where we get statistics and numbers and where everybody is today. It's like rumored to kill 400 people. Like, uh, yes, there's, there, I feel like there's so much more that was left out. And again, um, it, it, you know, depending on who's writing and adapting and approaching this material, it's, it's funny to see how they gravitate towards what they're comfortable with because um, the writer of this has gravitated towards and, and the director, the Jessica Chastain, the Amy Laughrin component. Um, and much like another Eddie Redmayne movie, The Danish Girl, where I felt like that screenwriter and director clearly uh, were not disinterested in the trans person, but more interested in the woman that had the relationship with him. So mm. I, I just think it's interesting how that pulls for focus, even though the title is a you know a, an entendre. I thought another component to the the a story double. that I thought was not very well. I mean, if, if it's based on a true story, then it is what it is, but it's not very... The detectives. I feel like they don't have much... They can't do anything. The hospital is not required to... The detectives are stuck because there's no body. The hospital knew that there may be some questionable things, so the body was cremated immediately, and then it took the hospital seven weeks to notify police. So, And then the files they're sharing with the detectives are minimal. They've pulled some key records. So they're kind of left like between a rock and a hard place. And it's not until 
they interview Jessica Chastain's character. But the hospital is insisting that the risk manager, like the head nurse, is present for all of the interviews. And the detectives know that these staff members are not going to be honest in front of their boss. But there's the interview with Jessica Chastain. There's a moment where the risk manager gets asked out and she's upset. Like, this better be important because I need to be in these interviews. And she walks out for a couple of minutes. And that's when the detectives Ooh. slide. Um, Why don't you take a look at this? <laughs> some medical records to her. And immediately she's like, oh, that's curious. This person has insulin in their system, but they weren't diabetic. So that would kill them. I thought that writing was very like, oh, we're going to very... And maybe that yeah. is how it happened. But it just all felt very convenient. Like, that wasn't the focus of the movie. Is like the actual... Mm -hmm. Like, um, the like solving of this crime is not the key like it's more about jessica chastain right so again it feels weird like that's a pretty major thing that she just blurted out like like so nonchalantly yes uh, and the detectives were played by noah emmerich and uh namdi asamoa who we saw in sylvie's love and is uh i think carrie washington's significant other i thought a funny scene was so Jessica starts to suspect Eddie is doing things because two now two patients have died and both had insulin in their system and they were not diabetic. So she calls an old friend who's also a nurse who used to work with Eddie. And that lady, I recognized her. Maria Dizia. You just saw her play uh, Mother in Funny Pages. That's right. I like her. And I thought and the way she was yeah. acting is how I would act if someone... Because she <laughs> Jessica asked her, like, do you know Charles... Is she kind of like pauses like, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't like to gossip unless you ask me. I'm not just going to tell you. But if you ask me, like, what do I think about someone? Mm -hmm. Oh, the floodgates open. And immediately she's like, yeah, we thought he was killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's like, oh, do you get a lot of codes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought that was a good scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you might know her from Orange is the New Black as well. Oh, gosh. So the way Charles was killing people was injecting them with either insulin or digoxin, which I think is some sort of heart medication. Um, and he was doing that because those medications are not controlled the way like narcotics are. So no one's really checking for those. Right. Like if someone were to steal them, it's like, well, you can't use those on the street recreationally. So why would someone steal? So then we find out that he was injecting insulin into saline bags, like randomly. So that's, I think, the, the film doesn't explain it, but then what I was reading outside of the film, that's why he's suspected of killing so many more people because, he, you know, who knows how many people coded because of him playing Russian roulette with these bags. But the friend at the diner tells Jessica's character that, so she runs back to the hospital and checks the, the stock of saline bags and she discovers a bag is leaking, meaning that someone filled it with something. And then she runs upstairs and I was so anxious because she has a bad heart. I know, I was like, what? Why are you running? Could take you, the elevator. Could you take the elevator please right now? <laughs> Why is she running? And, and we, we also have this like, it's like a ticking time bomb because it's like you have four months, three months, you have one month Two left. Months, right. <laughs> like, Let's, and then you still, yeah. Could you and there's take no guarantee because she needs a heart transplant. Could you take it? Yeah, it's not like, oh, we get the cutoff and here's your heart. Then you already alluded to Jessica does get sick and then like passes out, wakes up in the hospital, Eddie's there and she seems very afraid and in my mind i was laughing thinking i know she hopes she didn't get one of those uh yeah. random saline bags <laughs> um then while eddie's in the hospital with her at that same moment he's like oh yeah i looked at your chart and this and that and that and i thought isn't that a hipaa violation he's not her healthcare team why is he all up in her charts <laughs> sure um but i feel like we've established that you know, there are a lot of uh, every movie, loopholes. every movie or TV series that has stuff like this, where like a detective has to ask a family if they can. What do you call it when you dig exhume. some exhume a body? And it's always a super emotional thing. And I was, I watched this on a cruise ship by myself, and I was cackling because I thought, if you died and detectives came and said, "Can we exhume your body? We think there may have been foul play," I couldn't say yes fast enough. Because first of all, I would get a check probably, right? Like if, if a hospital killed you. I'm okay, like, I, 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 I think that when that sad man with the baby's <laughs> held and they're like, there might have been uh, malpractice. Oh, yes. Right. Where's the money? No. 
dig his ass I did, up. I did think that, but and I... And then you know. also, of course, like, I want to know, like, if he was killed, like, I want to know, like, first of all, if I... I wouldn't even bury you, would be cremated, but let's just say, like, it, it's just so funny that every movie there's a scene where someone has to go and, like, be so, like, sensitive to the matter. If you were killed, I want to know. Like, yeah, dig his ass up. <laughs> anyway. Um, that, okay, Jessica has two daughters, the older one. I wrote down a note that says that girl needs her ass whooped. Yeah, scre- <laughs> screaming at the babysitter. Screaming at the babysitter. I come home to you screaming at the babysitter. No. And then she kept telling her mom, no. Oh, yeah. All I could envision is my mom slapping the shit out of me if I would have said that to her. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I might die. I, I, you know, I, I guess I was annoyed at that scene, too, where they have to sit down, the older daughter, you know, to because it's important that That's she right. should know the signs of stroke, but... You know, and this little girl's response is like, can I go watch some TV? That also upset me. Like, little girl, you need to make sure you... Like, do you understand what I just told you? No, you you know what we need to do with you, little girl? We need to go visit some foster homes and see if you might like to stay there. Because that's what's going to happen. You know, when I was a kid and I would act up, my dad would um, put me in the car and drive me. And I'm sure he was pretending... Like, these weren't real foster homes. But he would drive by, like, residential areas and be like, that's a foster home. And I will drop you. <laughs> anyway, when Eddie's character is in the police station being interrogated, he starts having this rant screaming, I can't, I can't. And I thought, again, like this character is so fascinating and ho- terrifying. And we get such a, like a shallow glimpse of him. Yeah. And then finally, after all of this, which is not doesn't amount to much, the reason he gets like fully hemmed up is because they bring Jessica in and she sort of appeals to him, like, you need to tell me the truth. And he says, I killed this person, this person, Because she, she appeals to his good side and using empathy, which she clearly has a lot of. And, and if you think about it, it all goes back to that egg salad that she insists on sharing with him. Like, because she's she's showing him a kindness, I think, that most people have forgotten to but do. But see, I, if you, I, you're right, but the film doesn't really take us there. It's just kind of like... No, it, it was evident to me that... Like, he very much need The way that he's presented here is that someone that was very much alone and needed love and needed to be touched. And See, needed to be I think that's to. erroneous. You're correct, but I think the film's presenting this man as, like, very simple. Like, that's all he needed. But I think that he was... Based on what I read outside of the movie, he was severely mentally ill. And there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason to what he was doing. Sure. He was dangerous. Sure. He was a serial killer. So I think that this film treats him like... He just, you know, he, because he didn't get the care and kindness that he needed, he acted out in this way. I don't know that that's what this was. I, I don't know that that's... It's simplified. It's, it is overly simplified, but I get why something so, you know, that he'd been doing for so long kind of just came out into the open through this woman. Sure, at, you know, I guess. Imploring him. I but, mean, if that's what happened, it's what happened. But then she asked him why, and he says, they didn't stop me. And I feel like that's the line that should have told you this movie should have been something else. Well, right. Like, and I think the need to understand, like, kind of human compulsion to do things, like, they can't help themselves. Right. He was doing. a predator and was allowed to prey but, on... But then that's a lot like Dahmer, too. Like, towards the end, before he was caught, and was really, you know, out of control. Yeah. <laughs> I think this probably would have... I, I think what I would have wanted would be something more like, I mean, maybe like the, the Ryan Murphy Dahmer miniseries. Because he was really able to manipulate and take advantage of a healthcare system that is effed up. Right, and I think that, yes, I think... It, and then we can get into the legislature of it, you know. A procedural thriller about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, hospitals and litigation and uh, all of that fun stuff. But anyhow, good job from everyone in the movie. Yes, I, you know, I, Ch- Chastain is so good. Like, yeah, and I like her face. Yeah, I do too. It reminds uh, what me would, it's Sissy Spacek in the 70s, 80s. What would you give it? Uh, three. I would give it three out of five as well. Anything else? Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>